seat growth. It's one of our core habits of the hot six. Number one, realignment to self. Maybe what got you in this room won't keep you in this room. Because I'm going to share in just a few moments about some things that I've had to go back to. But anytime discouragement sets in, anytime a little extra skinny pop sneaks into my... Tia picked on skinny pop yesterday, so let's keep picking on it a little bit. We have to go back and realign. Why are we here? What has this program done for me? What has this community done for me? Do I have enough evidence to convict me of saying, yep, it works? Because there's only a couple things in life that I can be truly convicted of. But I'll tell you right now, a health coach can be one of them. And this program is the other. Because nobody can take your transformation away from you. Becca and Kevin yesterday talked about, I've never seen anyone leave this business in a healthy place. Realignment with self. Where are you at? If you are seeking growth, and this is applicable to anywhere in any business you're a part of. If you are seeking growth, realignment to why am I here. Number two, commit. The reason it's hard is when you lack commitment. Anytime it has been hard for me is because I'm not committed. I'll talk about it. The last 60 days I've been committed. And it hasn't been hard. I've always said all these things about how hard it is. Oh, man. Got to do this. There's another Zoom tonight. Oh, man. When I'm committed, like literally, John Maxwell will probably talk about it later today. He was talking about uh, that good thing that I just forgot. No, he, he was talking about the difference, though, of, of, of your intentions. And when he wakes up in the morning, you're, he's intentional. Hey, because he's committed. What was it? The anticipation. He wakes up and it's like, man, I'm anticipated. And I asked him, I'm like, well, what happens on the days that you're not anticipated? <laughs> that you're not feeling the anticipation? He said, typically you're lacking commitment. So I ask you, are you committed? And these are questions for you, not me. If you're seeking growth, are you aligned with self? Number two is, are you committed? Number three, a clearly defined goal. Somebody who, if you guys know me at all, I did have this spell check. And thankfully, Tiffany says, Doug, did you want goal or goals? I'm like, what's the difference? Well, goal is one. <laughs> My goals. My goals. I said, no, 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 it's a goal. Because the problem is we want everything and we want a lot of things and we're not have a clearly defined goal. What is your clearly defined goal? Our number one goal was, Tia said, I am becoming a coach because Amaya needs to go in this private school. She went down, she met with Angie Taylor, and she said, how much is the school for Amaya? She said, $400, $500. She goes, great. I know Doug won't let me start for four to $500, so I need to go make six to 700 So there's a little bit of buffer in there to buy uniforms and school pictures so she can come and present that to Doug and say, can I do this? It won't come out of the budget. Do you see? Tia had a clearly defined goal. A goal was to close my furniture store. The clearly defined goal after I went executive director is how much is that going to take and how long will it take it? It was a clearly defined goal. I have a goal of being in the best shape of my life on my birthday of this year. It's clearly defined. There is no room for compromise. When you're committed, there is no room for compromise. Number three, number four, decision to obtain it at any cost. It's interesting, yesterday morning I was sending out some text messages on some different fibble strands I'm a part of. And I asked them the question, I said, if one was seeking growth, what are the absolute non-negotiables? I got a flood of information back. Baffling how almost everything said the same thing. And I really took a list of the greatest coaches in this company and I compiled them into this. A decision to attain that goal at any cost. T and I left this conference 14 years ago. We went back to our hotel room and we cried because we knew we were screwed. We had been exposed to a bigger life and there was no going back. We would have been better by not walking into this room because once you walk into this room and you go home and you don't change and implement what is learned, you'll be miserable. That's when it gets hard because you didn't do and commit to the decision that you made when you were in the room. So a decision to obtain that goal 
at any cost. I read a book eight years ago by Grant Cardone, Be Obsessed or Be Average. And I'm going to say the word obsessed so many times. I'm also going to say success. Because some of you, those are like cuss words to you. <sighs> obsessed. <laughs> That's why you're so miserable. Because you actually might be obsessed with being miserable. I, I mean, literally, I, I was raised on don't, be, don't chase success. Why not? Do I want to chase fat and misery like you? Like, I'm mean, just thinking like the people that are telling me not to chase or be obsessed, and I'm like, man, the greatest of the greats, Havila showed them last night, Oprah Winfrey, Mother Teresa, the great Billy Graham, Elon Musk, they're obsessed, but yet we sit back and we eat popcorn, skinny pop, but we talk about them. Some of you guys, it's time to give some people some things to talk about. Number five, when you're seeking growth, you have to make sure you have a vehicle that has the capacity to get you where you want to go. Many of you have goals, but you've been doing the same thing over and over again, and it's not moving forward. So you have to say, is it the vehicle? Is the vehicle broke? Or do I need to implement some changes? Nine years in the furniture business, almost 12, excuse me, by the time I actually got out, it was 11 and a half. But I got exposed to Optavia nine years in. Two and a half years later, I'm out. I had to say, Doug, you write these goals down at the er end of the year. They're non-measurable. They're, you know, they're goals. I'd like to. I hope to. I pray to. I got tired of writing those goals over and over and over again. So I had to look and go, is it the furniture business or is it Doug? And I'm like, man, I feel like I'm doing the right thing because sometimes it is us. And sometimes it is maybe the trap that we've partnered with and said, oh, this is just the way it is. I have a degree in this. Mm, this is what somebody told me I'd always do and be great at. Well, you hate it. Why are you still there? So I had to look, and I came, and I got exposed to Bradley McDonald and Dr. Ray, and I'm like, I can follow these guys. And it looks like the vehicle's working. I'm seeing other people do well by doing a really good thing. So I got obsessed. So it was the vehicle. Next is structure and calendar. Does your structure and does your calendar support your goal? T and I left this conference 14 years ago. You're like, Doug, you had to level up 14 years ago? Yes, we did. We just called it Go Global or Optavia Convention or something. No, that's not true. But it was just like this. Maybe a little bit less people. And we went home and we said, okay, for us, it goes boom, boom, boom. And you know what boom, boom was? God, family, what does this have to do with going global? We disconnected from so many associations, so many things. Tia went and put in a resignation at the Bible study. I went and canceled Thursday night men's group with the golf course. I'm like, I, every time I go out there, I end up doing the five and one-ish. Because I do five and one, and then Thursday night men's league, I go five, one, and five course lights. I'm like, this is, you know, like, I'm, I'm in the wrong group here. Or am I going to change them, or are they changing me? So I went home and we made some changes. So does your structure actually support your goal some of you guys need to go home and clear your freezer out. You're like, but I paid so much to the Schwann's man. The Schwann's man is like the killer of dreams. Right? The Schwann's. Oh, but I paid for it. Yeah, you also paid for the buffet. Are you just going to keep eating and keep eating and keep eating? Stop going to the buffets. I used to, so, you know, T and I met in this building uh, 25 years ago. There's a little Chinese joint down here. It's called Lim's Chinese Buffet. I showed my girls the other day. We're driving by. I'm like, you guys want to stop at Lim's? I used to eat there for $5.99, all you can eat lunch, and they're like, Dad, you look like it too. I'm like, hey, 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 <laughs> right? Who are you going to buffets with? Pursuit of mentorship and being coachable. I was hesitant to put this in, but everyone was like, mentorship, because I know the moment I walk off this stage, my text will be full of, hey, Doug, will you mentor me? <laughs> Absolutely, I will. Or your coach will. But I would ask if the others, you have enough proof of action from everything above because you don't need to go, mentor me, mentor. You, the questions will develop themselves if you're in action. What questions should I be asking you? Do the work and trust me, you will know what to ask. And are you being coachable? Some of you need to say some really, or to hear some interesting things, but I don't know if you're ready. And so we hold back. And I know some of you are going to be like, no, tell me, Doug. Dan Valentine, tell me what it is. 
no, you're not, we love you too much. We love your kids. <laughs> Cause it, but you know what? As the walls begin to come down, we would love to help you. Your coach would love to help you. But are you ready? Managing emotions, grit, determination. Managing emotions. When you're committed, you're going to deal with the emotions. You're going to deal with the rough stuff. You're going to deal with the canceled premiere. You're going to deal with all the stuff. But you know what? When I leave events like this, it confirms my I don't give up attitude. And some of you don't have that. But you're getting that this weekend, and that's okay. But managing emotions, grit, determination, and IDGAF attitude. Doug, what is that? What's that spell? Nope. <laughs> you interpret it however you want. <laughs>